Imagine yourself stepping back through time, 140 million years ago, to what would be the late Jurassic of Dorset. Now most places that you go fossil hunting across the Jurassic coast, you'd be fossil hunting in areas which would have been marine ecosystems, where animals like plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs, marine reptiles, would have thrived. However, here where I am in Purbeck today, it would have been an inland subtropical forest, and where I'm specifically standing would have been a shallow lagoon where dinosaurs would have taken refuge to drink. But how do we know this sort of information? So, before me lies approximately 100 dinosaur footprints, and it's not just behind me either, they're scattered all across this quarry. And these were made by a group of dinosaurs called sauropods, and specifically a brachiosaurus. Now I'm sure as many of you know, the brachiosaurus was in Jurassic Park, the one with the long neck, and that's what the sauropods are, the long-necked dinosaurs. And dinosaurs like brachiosaurus would have been able to reach up to an incredible 50 tons, that's five times the weight of a modern elephant. Now, these dinosaur footprints were first discovered in 1997 by quarrymen Kevin Keats and Trevor Haysom. But it wasn't until 2016 that these footprints in the quarry were actually opened up to the public to be able to come and enjoy as well. Now, the important question that we need to ask, though, is what can these footprints actually tell us? What stories can they tell us about the animals that left them? Well, paleontologists who have studied these footprints thoroughly, also known as iconologists, are the scientists that study trace fossils, fossils that have been left behind by animals that are exhibiting behaviours. And this very behaviour is walking, trotting. Now, iconologists have been able to deduct that perhaps this was a shallow lagoon mainly because of the sheer concentration of footprints all in a small location. And that's because there was clearly something here attracting these animals, and it is proposed that that was an essential resource such as drinking water. So, famous scientist Alexander McNeil did extensive studies on the relationship between the size of an animal's footprint and how that correlates with the size of the animal in height. Now, Alexander's studies on dinosaurs proposed that the length of its footprint times by four is how tall that animal would have been up to its hips. So, why don't we give that a little try ourselves and put that to practice. So, with measuring the footprint that I've got here, it's approximately 50 centimetres. So that makes the animal two metres up to its hips in height. So why don't we go and have a look and see how tall that would have been. So we've managed to hook our tape measure here up to a little rock on the ledge. We can see that this animal would have approximately been just a little bit taller than me up to where its hips were, but that's not accounting for the length of this animal's neck. This truly would have been a humongous dinosaur. Okay. Now perhaps this will help you visualise the ginormity of the animal that left these footprints here. Now this one here is a little bit bigger than two metres up to its hips, but perhaps the ones that left these footprints were juveniles. But it's not just here in the UK where dinosaur footprints have been found. Dinosaur footprints have been discovered in many continents across the globe, including Portugal, which I've actually seen myself, and even in Bolivia, where there's a vertical wall with dinosaur footprints scaling right from the bottom all the way to the top. There are plenty of dinosaur footprints to be seen in America, but I unfortunately haven't had the opportunity to be able to see any myself. Thankfully, I've got a colleague, Ashley Hall, who lives in Montana and works at the Bozeman Museum of the Rockies. And she's here today to be able to shed a little insight on dinosaur footprints from a paleontological perspective. Hello, Karen. Thank you so much for contacting me about these amazing fossil footprints. I was so excited to see them. You know, dinosaur footprints like these are so important to paleontology because we can infer an incredible amount about an animal's behavior that we would otherwise never be able to see. You know, from looking at trackways and the ways in which animals move today, we can infer behavior from dinosaurs in the same way. We can ask questions like, were they moving in herds? Was this a popular route for dinosaurs moving through the area? How fast were they going? How heavy were they? What species were there? You know, these are all really good questions that those trackways can help us answer. Um, in America, my favorite dinosaur track site is actually an 112 million year old site called the Mill Canyon Dinosaur Track Site, and it's in Moab, Utah. You know, there's incredible tracks from theropods, sauropods, ornithopods, ankylosaurs, and even a crocodile belly slide, where a crocodile slid down a mud bank and left its scale impressions in the mud. It's so super cool. You know, the sauropod tracks at your site, uh, compared to mine, are similar, 
but yours are about 30 million years older. So you can see the differences in the shape or morphology between the front feet and the back feet. And we can tell those when we look at the fossil footprints. So pretty cool. We can tell which direction the animals were moving. We can calculate how heavy they were, all that kind of stuff. So I want to thank you for all that you do for the Jurassic Coast Trust. And I want to thank the Jurassic Coast Trust for all the work that they do as well. You know, I'm a huge fan of Mary Anning and her legacy and the work being done to preserve and protect not only her legacy, but England's only natural world heritage site. It's so important. You know, it's such a crucial site for understanding um, Jurassic sea life like ichthyosaurs and ammonites, and it's definitely been on my bucket list to visit one day. So when I come to England, I'm hoping you can be my tour guide. Do we have a deal? All right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. And uh, I'd be happy to chat again. All right, bye Kieran. Kieran. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the National Trust for allowing us to film this video at this beautiful location. And secondly, the Jurassic Coast Trust for attending and assisting me with the filming of this video. And last but not least, my good colleague Ashley Hall in America, Montana, for filming and contributing towards this video.